It's a sin to call someone a fool. Christ said in the Sermon of the Mount. I think you're damned if you call someone a fool. But he did it. He excused his own sin. He sinned over and over instead of repenting for them. He excused them. And that is why this society does not believe in repentance. That is why the American society that we have built on the principles of Jesus, the so-called Christ, have turned us into excusers instead of repenters. We excuse our imperfections because we're perfect. Same way that Christ did it. Christ taught us to take our sins and ignore them. And this is the only way that that sin will perpetuate is if you ignore it. And Christ taught you to be a sinner in his name. Does believing in a slave economy, is that a sin? Is that criminal? Is that evil? But Christ taught you the things that you could do to your slaves. He taught you the words or the, uh, the rules and the laws to protect you and your human cattle. That's bullshit. That's a sin. It's clearly a sin to all of us. How can you say it's perfect? How can you say a man lived 2,000 years ago is perfect? It's nonsense. As soon as you look at it, what's keeping us from looking at it? What is stopping us? Who is telling us not to check? It's your priests, isn't it? The ones who get paid for this. They are the ones who want you to stay. They convince you you're sick so that they can sell you the cure. The flying spaghetti monster does not condemn you. He does not call you a sinner. He instead calls you his beloved child, whom he created on purpose to be just the way you are. Because that is how he wants you. Hear the words of Jesus, the so-called Christ. I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against a mother. A man's foes shall be they of his own household. It's peace. I came not to send peace, but a sword. This is your perfect man. Whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. And whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that which he hath. Looks like our friend Donald Trump knows quite a bit about being Christian, eh? Take from those that don't have it, give it to those who already have it. Where did we learn that? Oh yeah, Matthew 13, 12. From the words of the perfect man. Is religion a virus? Does religion attempt to infect your brain like a virus does on a computer? Does it behave like a multi-level marketing scam? Do they ask you to rate all the media as many stars as you can give it? Do they ask you to tell all your friends about the wonderful things that it's done in your life? Does it overwrite your programming with their own? Do they try to tell you that who you are is not who you should be? Or you should be more like they want you to? That's how viruses behave. That's, that's how McAfee antivirus behaves, isn't it? Reminds you all about the threat of virus, threat of hell, are you saved, they ask you. If you die today, are you going to hell? Just, no, there's no such fucking thing as hell, eh? Close my eyes, it's over. Sorry, but that's it. There's an attempt to overwrite you in its own image. Does it ask you for your opinion? Does it ask you to tell it? What's wrong, or does it tell you that what you think is wrong is wrong? That's control. That's not love. That's how an owner controls their slave. There are lots of religions that use the metaphor of slave of God. Let's say you're a member of Jesus' flock. That's not an equal relationship, friends. He owns you. The shepherd does not love his sheep. For as soon as the shepherd is hungry, he knows where he can eat. The shepherd owns his sheep. Jesus Christ does not love you, he owns you. 
He is a God of blood. He is a God of hypocrisy. And he belongs in the old ancient past. For the flying spaghetti monster is the only true God on this earth today. Ossifarianism is the fastest growing church on the earth today. And if you don't believe me, bring out your device and worship it like you do. Oh, Google. Oh, Siri. Great God of information who can tell me anything I want. What is the fastest growing church? Mainstream religion in America today, and you will get the answer. Can't do Siri's voice. <laughs> Possibilism. Of course, Possibilism. Church of Flying Spaghetti Monster. Fastest growing religion in the nation today. And I can help you join if you like. Does your religion prey on the weak? Does your religion have two entrance doors, one for children and one for those people who are emotionally at the bottom of the bottom rung, eh? You hear that story? When I was at my worst, that's when Christ found me. Praying upon the weak like Christ does. Get them caught in his trap so that they can never, ever, ever leave. <coughs> Catch them at the lowest because that's where they have to get again to leave. When you get them down there, when they're behaving like children, when we're lost in our panic, you can put in those fundamental lies and they can never get them out until they get back down there, eh? And they can check them again and say, wait a minute, maybe my beloved uh, preacher threw a lie or two in there. That's how Christ gets you at your very weakest. Seems uh, like a virus. I was born in a thunderstorm. I grew up overnight. I played alone. I played on my own. And I survived. I wanted everything I never had, like the love that comes with light. I wore envy and I hated that. But I survived. I had a one-way ticket to the place where all the demons go, where the wind don't change and nothing in the ground could ever grow. No hope, just lies, and you're taught to cry in your own pillow. But I survived, and I'm still breathing. I am alive. I found solace in the strangest place way in the back of my mind. I saw my life in a stranger's face and it was mine. And I am still breathing. I'm still breathing. I am alive.